In this problem, we're told that an airplane is over Redding, California, which on our map is right up here at the top. And we're told that it's traveling south at a speed of 60 miles per hour. And as it's flying south, the wind is blowing to the east at 30 miles per hour. So the, the plane maintains a southerly heading. So it continues to aim to the south, but the wind blows to the east, so it drifts off to the right on, in our picture here as it flies toward the south. After two hours, what, will the, what town will the plane be closest to, and how far will it be from Reading after two hours? Well, here's an important piece of information right here. This distance on the map is 20 miles. And if you get a ruler, go get a ruler if you have one handy. Um, if this is printed correctly, and it may print a little bit different if you printed the page uh, and had it scale a little bit differently on the printing, but it should be about one half inch, this distance right here. Should be about one half inch, and that's 20 miles. So on the page, I'm just going to take note of that. That's the scale for my map. The scale on the map is that one half inch is equal to 20 miles. Now if I look back at the map here, I know the plane is flying south, but as it flies south, it drifts to the east some at the same time because of the wind. And the key to solving this problem is to consider the north-south motion and the east-west motion independently. So first I'll take a look at the north-south motion, and I'll just take a note of that, indicating that I'm only considering the north-south or the vertical motion. And I know this, the distance in the north-south direction will equal the velocity times the time. And the north-south velocity is 60 miles per hour. That was given in the problem. And the time is two hours. And you can see mathematically the hours cancel out. And we're left with 60 times two, that's 120 miles. Now we can figure out how far that is on the map. 120 miles, we can actually do this as a unit conversion. You might be able to tell that it should be three inches. But 120 miles times, look at this, one half inch is 20 miles. So I'm going to write 0.5 inches, that's the one half inch, per 20 miles. And then the miles cancel, leaving me with inches. So I have 120 times 0.5 divided by 20 and that comes out to 3 inches so the 120 miles is 3 inches on the map so I'm going to go back to the map and take take a ruler and I'm going to measure off 3 inches on the map and that's 3 inches starting at Reading and going south for 3 inches and that'll represent 120 miles so we line up the ruler north-south and start at Reading and we go down and that puts us to about here three inches, so that represents 120 miles to the south. Now while the plane is flying to the south, the wind is blowing in the east-west direction. So I'll do a east-west calculation here. I know the distance that it goes will be the velocity times the time. And for the velocity here, I only need the east-west velocity, and that's provided by the wind. And we're told the wind is blowing at 30 miles per hour and the trip is still two hours so once the hours cancel once again we're left with miles so we have 30 times 2 that means in the east-west direction it goes 60 miles and then you can do this math pretty easily you can see that if it goes 120 miles and that's represented by three inches on the map well 60 miles half of that distance will be represented by an inch and a half one half of that distance. So I'm just going to write 1.5 inches on the map. So let's go back to the map and then from this point we want to go 1.5 inches to the right which would be to the east. And that puts us to about right there. And the town that it's closest to is Lincoln. You can see that on the map. So that's the answer to the first question, Lincoln. Now we're also asked 
how far will it be from Reading after two hours? So the, the distance from Reading, that would be the distance from Reading down to here, down to Lincoln. So let's draw that line in. And we want to calculate that distance. We can do that with the Pythagorean theorem. We've just calculated that this long distance is 120 miles and this shorter one here is 60 miles so we can find the length of the hypotenuse. We'll just call it we'll call it D for distance and let's do the calculation. I know that D squared is going to be 120 squared plus 60 squared. Just apply the Pythagorean theorem and that comes out to 14,400 plus 3600 which adds up to 18,000 and that's d squared so to find d we have to take the square root of that d is the square root of 18,000 and that comes out to 134 miles So after two hours, the airplane is closer to Lincoln than to any other town. We just see that on the map. And it's 134 miles from its starting point over Reading, which we find with the Pythagorean theorem.